A quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Nick Cardone is a therapist in Nova Scotia. He thinks more men need space to talk about their inner lives, but may feel skittish about doing it in an office. So Nick suggests the problem might not be the practice. It's the setting. Today, Nick spells out a few ways for men to get involved in better mental health practices without sitting on a therapist's couch for an hour. I have one teeny tiny goal to share with you today. I want to change the way we look at therapy forever. And this is especially true for men and boys. In my talk, I'm gonna sound like I refer to this binary of male and female. I assure you that's not my intention and that my core belief is that even looking at masculinity, we are diverse. Today, my hope is to encourage more action in the realm of mental health for men and boys. If we look at traditional masculine norms, in some of my work, we refer to this as the script. Generally speaking, what do men do in the face of distress in their lives? Well, the script tells us that we're going to mask that distress. We minimize, we avoid, we self-medicate. Don't show your emotions. Don't ask for help. Nothing is wrong. And if you do get to the point where you are asking for help, some of the language you might hear, don't be a pussy or grow a pair. This is an absurdly difficult reality for men and boys to live with. And yet these norms persist today. There's one part of the script I do want to jump into, and that is this idea that men and boys traditionally have poor help-seeking behaviors. In fact, this is one of the most, most robust findings in the men's health literature, that men and boys tend not to reach out for help when they're struggling. And yet, there is very little of this uptake. And so we tend to say, oh, it's because men and boys have poor help-seeking behaviors. And I acknowledge that. But let's wait a bit. The culture of therapy. It's time-bound. It's office-based. It's talk-focused. You're centered on exploring your emotions. And you're sitting in a chair and you're relatively still physically. Generally speaking, how many men and boys feel comfortable at the prospect of sitting on their asses for a 50-minute hour talking about their feelings in an intimate context? And I know it's a bit of a stereotype, but the stereotype persists for a reason. Why is the couch the only option when we know it doesn't work for all men? What are we doing about it? I'm gonna ask you to use your imaginations to come sit by the fire. And if you're comfortable, you can close your eyes, you don't have to. Imagine yourself sitting by a fire. You can smell the wood smoke. You can hear the crackling of the fire. You can see the glowing embers. and you're present. And my invitation to you while you're there is to consider that you can do therapy here. There's a whole bunch of other strategies and approaches that can be worked with men and, and I could go on and on about them, but just generally speaking, adventure-based therapy, wilderness therapy, yoga and mindfulness, using community service projects, having men engage in storytelling or music, using creative expression, mentors can be super powerful, engaging in rite of passage rituals, there's all kinds of ways. Specifically though, some things that work in the training world with men and boys, connection, connection, connection. We're told that therapy has to happen a certain way. My invitation to therapists and to anyone who needs help is to ask your therapist to take you outside. 
The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Halifax, Nova Scotia. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Halifax. Visit TED.com slash TEDx Shorts to listen to the full talk and learn more about TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.